Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to dive into the world of rosacea and particularly the pimply, the acne type of rosacea, which is the type I have. And I wanted to share with you the different treatments and products that have worked really, really well for me. I really started to notice that I got this type of rosacea in 2021. So for years leading up to that, I always had like the vascular rosacea where my face would be very red, it would flush very easily. And then around 2021, when I was 43, that's when I noticed the pimply type of rosacea started. So this is my starting point here. Uh, I have some rather unglamorous photos here to show you. So as you can see here, you can see my rosacea is really, really flared up at this point in time. So red and pimply and just raw and just, you know, really, really not nice, making me feel really, really self-conscious as well when I would go out and about. So according to the National Rosacea Society, over 16 million Americans have rosacea and over 415 million people worldwide suffer from rosacea symptoms. And unfortunately, they don't know how rosacea really starts in the body. There's a bunch of theories, but they don't really know. And the same with a the cure. There is no cure for rosacea. So that's why we have to try a bunch of things and figure out what's the best treatment for the type of rosacea we had. So I'll dive into those treatments and what has worked for me. As you can see, my rosacea is looking really, really good at the moment. So there's four types of rosacea. I'll just run through them briefly because I'm far from a dermatologist or a medical professional in any way, but we've got the type that causes the flushing. So the red, the vessels, then we have the acne type rosacea, which is the type I have. Then they have the type that causes a thickening in the skin. Uh, some people get very thick skin, sort of a thickness on their nose. And then there's ocular rosacea where it can affect your eyes. So that's the types and they all have different treatments. Some of the common symptoms for rosacea are flushing, redness, uh, especially in this area here, as well as visible blood vessels on the face. Mine were particularly on my cheeks here and around my nose. So what normally happens with rosacea is there's a flare up and then it tends to calm down. So I have experienced that, uh, the flares, and that is something that your dermatologist has probably talked to you about is trying to figure out what your triggers are. So we'll get into that in a minute, but the flares and then the settling down is a very common uh, trait for rosacea. So having rosacea can be very, very challenging uh, physically and emotionally. I've really, really struggled with it. So I'll have flares of rosacea. So at the moment I'm experiencing a good period, but when it's bad, it's really bad. Like you've seen in some of those photos there. And then, you know, it really affects how I would feel personally. Um, I'm putting all this makeup on, I'm trying to cover it up or have my hair kind of coming across, or I just simply would cancel dinner plans with my friends because I didn't want to go out because I just didn't feel, you know, myself. I didn't feel good. So rosacea is a really serious skin issue that unfortunately doesn't have a cure. We just have to figure out our triggers and then our treatments. Okay, so let's talk about what can trigger a rosacea flare. So dermatologists state that it could be ingredients in our skincare products such as alcohol, fragrance, menthol, camphor, witch hazel, ingredients like that, that really can aggravate the skin and affect the skin barrier. We also have to be mindful of spicy foods, saunas, hot sunny days, things like that. Anything that's going to make the skin hotter and like flushed, those are definitely things that we want to avoid. So from personal experience, I have really tried so hard to figure out what my triggers are. And I'll be honest, it has been very, very difficult for me to figure that out. So what I did for a period was I just trimmed my skincare routine way, way back to a gentle cleanser 
and a very gentle moisturizer. Like I stripped my skincare routine way, way back. Then in terms of food, I really tried to reduce the amount of spicy food I was eating. So no more hot sauce on my tacos and no more spicy Thai curries, that sort of thing. And I also stopped drinking cocktails and wine and things like that just to really try and figure out what was affecting my skin. And of course, when I'm outside, I'm always completely slathered with sunscreen. I always wear a hat, try to remember to wear sunglasses, and I don't go in hot saunas or hot tubs, things like that. So during this time where I'm trying to figure out what triggers a rosacea flare up, I was getting so desperate. So I went to my dermatologist and said, please help me. I'm just feeling so like terrible about my skin and I just don't want to socialize and I'm just, makeup doesn't cover it, just help me. And so we just started checking things off the list, trying all these different medications and lotions and creams and stuff and nothing really was helping. And I was starting to feel really, really desperate until we figured out what actually works for my rosacea. Okay, so now onto the treatments that I found that absolutely work for this pimply type of rosacea that I have. So number one is ivermectin cream. Now this is a type of cream that you slather all over your rosacea bumps and it actually gets in there and it kills the demodex mites. So basically this type of uh, rosacea is caused by these little mites that we all have all over our skin. But when you have this type of rosacea, there's like a more concentrated amount in this area. They love these like oily part of your skin. They're having a big party, they're flaring up. And we don't want that because it causes all this redness, all these like pimples all over our face. So I slather those horrible mites with this ivermectin cream and it works so, so well. Now these Demodex mites also really, really do not like sulfur. So I'll just smother this all over those rosacea spots as well. And that really helps to reduce the, the little pimples and things I have all over my face and significantly slows down that flare. Now I know of a lot of people that really get good results with azelic acid. I know The Ordinary and Paula's Choice have a couple of really good products that people love, but I personally have got the best bang for my buck with the Ivermectin cream and the Prosacea. So in addition to using these different creams and things, I also got some lasers. So I did the XLV laser and a V-beam laser. So XLV is a dual system laser. So it has two different types of lasers at different lengths. So the first laser targets blood vessels close to the skin surface and the second laser targets deeper blood vessels. So that's the XLV. In the clinic for my second uh, XLV, so they just put all this numbing stuff over my face. So my face is all starting to get really numb and feel really, really weird. So um, that's fine. It will help to make the laser less painful. So this is my second one. So the first one was like, like rubber bands, just flick, 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 flick. Oh my God, even with this numbing stuff, it was kind of painful. So yes, yeah, so hopefully this time I'm a little bit more used to it and um, it'll be a little bit less painful or uncomfortable. And the other type of laser that I've tried is a V-beam laser. So this laser converts the light into heat and the heat destroys the abnormal cells in the targeted area without damaging the surrounding skin. So it basically destroys those pesky blood vessels on the surface of our skin. Take a walk around and see the, the screen. Oh, okay, cool. Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. So I have had really, really great results using the lasers. So unfortunately they are really very expensive. They're quite an investment, but I personally have found them to be very, very successful. So I started off first up by doing three. Uh, I did them one month apart 
and now things are looking really, really good and I'm on sort of a schedule of doing it every six months. So in addition to these different creams and the lasers and staying out of the sun and reducing alcohol and spicy food consumption, when I'm having a flare, I will strip back my skincare routine completely. So I'll just simply do a gentle cleanser and then a gentle but hydrating and soothing moisturizer. So I've found that that really, really helps to just soothe the skin, let that flare pass, and then I'll slowly start adding some of those other items, my serums, my retinol, things like that, back into my skincare routine. So even though my skin does have rosacea and is sensitive, I have found that I can use quite a lot of serums and retinol, even tretinoin, I've just started playing around with that too. So I have found that I can do that despite having the rosacea, which is really, really good because I love skincare, but having rosacea can be a bit of a bummer sometimes because you're like, Ugh, I can't do anything because it just flares my skin up. But with time, my skin barrier has really, really improved and my skin is now a lot hardier than it was like a few years ago. And I have like a very small uh, flare there on my nose at the moment, but it's very minimal. I'll put some ivermectin and prosacea on there and reduce my skincare routine just for a couple of days while the flare sort of gets dealt with, goes away and then I can just go back to my regular skincare routine. So in terms of sunscreen, I recommend using a mineral sunscreen. So I personally have found that that's been the best for rosacea for me. And I particularly love this one from Supergoop. It's their matte screen and I actually have it on today. I'm using that instead of foundation and I just love it. The coverage is really nice. It's light, but I like it. And then I'll just add a little highlight there just to sort of jazz things up a bit. So I highly recommend that one. So that is my rosacea journey over the last three or four years. It's been a little bit of a rocky road, especially at the beginning, the first year or so, while I was trying to figure out what exactly was going on here. And I was like, welcome to mid forties. But I'm so happy that with trial and error, I figured out what works for me. So drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you've got any questions about the different things I've tried. But also if you've tried something that's really, really worked for you, let us know because we all want to learn about what works, what doesn't work, what product to try, that type of thing. So drop all of that sort of thing down in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.